Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>
Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Well, brothers and sisters, if it's not one thing, it's another. <laughs> Our power is out, so for you watching abroad, for you here today, um, just bear with us. We do have lights, which is enough for us now. I guess we could circle back to the 300s, where they had no electricity. <laughs> Anyways, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord of God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only the Son, Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandments there may be are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. When I was in seminary, there was a constant tension. The tension being how to correct a brother and how to receive a correction from a brother. We pedantically would always laugh at this. We would mock this concept because whenever we knew we were about to be corrected, a fellow seminarian would come up and go, 
brother, do you have a second? <laughs> of course. Joking aside, correction is a part of life. Analogically, corrections happen all the time. For instance, I don't know if you realize this, if there's any air traffic people in the room or in Facebook land. The reality is, say a plane departs from London to arrive in Los Angeles. The pilot, in order to arrive at destination, must make about hundreds and hundreds of little course corrections in order that they arrive in LA. Should he fail to make one correction, the subsequent reality would be that they may not land at the destination on the ticket. In the spiritual life, you could take that analogy and apply. Because you and I, in the Christian life, must know that course correction is necessary and frequent. Now, we might think we know what correction needs to be, but that may not be true, because we might make it a preference, or an opinion, or a consensus. So what determines correction? If something is good, then that's where we aim. Should we fail that respect, should we miss the good, the result is we do evil. In Greek, this, the concept of sin is an archery term. So for the archer who pulls back the bow to release the arrow, if he misses the mark, that's the same word we use for sin. We miss the mark. That's where correction is necessary. And I have had many a times where I've put my foot in my mouth, proverbially speaking. I have characteristically tr treated people with bad behavior. I have not shown charity to someone else. And yes, people come out to me and say, you know, that thing you did, that's not charitable. That's not Christian. That's proper correction. The thing you did, that wasn't good. Because we can't make the comparison that we are what we do. A lot of people do that, right? Oh, you Christians are nothing but a bunch of hypocrites. Perhaps. But we're also in need of mercy and justice. And with God, His justice is His mercy. For us who are not God, mercy is mercy, and justice is justice. We can't combine them the way the divine Lord would. So it hurts to be corrected at times, but it is our duty as Christians to look after those we know to be brothers and sisters in the Lord, and maybe go with them one-on-one, -on -one. have that coffee, have that conversation in charity, because it can't be like Cain and Abel, you know? Who is my brother? We can't say that. Or I am not my brother's keeper. We're all, in that respect, beholden to one another in charity. And at times we do live in a world that will teach us to mind our own business. That doesn't include someone else. But if someone is drowning in their sins, or if someone's drowning in real life, we make it our business. Because it's about the good of that person. Our society may be full of initiatives and programs, right? It could be like an AA program, or something for at-risk youth. Something that needs rehabilitation for a person. But above all else, to be a brother or a sister to someone, genuinely caring for them. That's priority in this today's respect. You know, Ezekiel, a prophet, is told by God that he's a watchman. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell you, 
If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. The sin of omission, failing to step up, failing to speak. If we love someone, we, we can't leave them in ignorance, especially if there's evil that they are committing. St. Paul tells us today, and he reminds everyone, every just law is built on love. The willing of the, uh, the good of the other, right? Basic definition of love, to will the good of the other as the other. Every just law is built on love, and if we focus on loving and teaching others to love, teaching others to love, everything else will fall into place. Now, society has many laws, and they're meant for order and stability. A good society will have laws. It's what works to keep society held together. And they're built on that concept of justice to render what's due. That's the virtue of justice, is to render what's due, and it is in three forms. We have mutual justice between myself and another human, to render what's due to each other. But we also have justice, that which is due to this, the head of the society, the state, in our case, the nation, whatever. And then there's that which is due from that nation state to the citizen. So that's just natural virtue. That's justice. And it works in those three arenas. And these, in this society, we believe, will have that proper balance. And it's not always, in, and sometimes it may not be always in force with love. But to go deeper than labels of something like suspect, victim, criminal, there's only one label that does matter, and that is brother, sister. I've had some very beautiful encounters with people that have perhaps, say, transgressed law. They may have ended up in a correctional facility. But they're still brother. They're still sister. And yes, they know the crime. Yes, they know the sentence. And yes, they know they're wrong in their action. But they're not out of the bound of God's mercy. They're not out of that union. St. Paul simply repeats what our Lord himself answered when the scribe asked him, what was the greatest commandment regarding each other? Citing Mark, right? St. Mark's Gospel. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. When we correct each other fraternally, we are not returning evil for evil. Rather, we're returning it in love. Our Gospel talks about this procedure. Jesus lays out the procedure. Now the reason for the procedure is for what happens later and what happens before. Realize, before we encounter today's reading, Jesus has shared with his disciples the audacious reality that makes up the Good Shepherd. The, the audacious reality is that the Shepherd will forsake the 99 for one. He will go after that one and correct him and bring him into a relationship. This is why every time you see the icon of the Good Shepherd, Jesus has a lamb around his shoulders. He's not dragging the lamb. He's not, you know, being maligning. He's carrying it. Consider your life in that respect. Should we stray, it is the Lord who will yoke us to him and carry us. Not belligerently, with justice and mercy. And he then goes into this procedure. He then goes to speak on this corrective mentality. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Jesus did, Jesus did not say, if your brother sins against you, go to Twitter. Or TikTok. Or your friend. Or your foe. Go to him alone. First, if he listens to you, you have won over your brother. 
The, the concept of obedience is that it's first rooted in listening. Now this, like I said at the outset, we're not talking about preference, we're not talking about opinion, we're talking about if there's a severe transgression, if there's something that is morally evil. If that happens, you go to him alone, you go to her alone. Should this not happen, should this not take effect, or the encounter occurs and it blows up, fosters more rebellion, then you go to two or three witnesses, because it is a matter of the public. And there's, if, should there be refusal, and there's no, rep, there's no way to repair scandal, you go to the furthest reality, that the church, the people in communion. We are persons in communion, called together by God. That is the church with its head, of course, in our case, our pontiff, Pope. But in Jesus' era, obviously, it's those he's called to himself. Now this bizarre reality of it, he refuses even to listen to the church, treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Now people can read this very maligning, malignant, they would. That's not true. Rather, you still have a disposition of charity, and you still offer an invitation to come back. You don't treat them as if they're outcasts or, in some respects, shunned. <clears throat> this is where it's all bound into. This is what's so important, okay? This procedure of correction, this method, is built on what we're about to hear next and what I want to share with you. That whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. God gives us a great power to forgive and to remove. For us who are sinners, we know this all too well, when we go before our God in the confessional and say, forgive me for I have sinned, we come bound with our ego, with our pride, with our lust, with our insistent opinion with our stupidities, our foibles, our sinful inclination. We bring it to Jesus, the physician and judge. That's how the priest stands as, the physician and judge of soul. And in that instance, as Christ the head, he looses those things which have kept you from what we heard today in our prayer of true freedom. Because we're rooted in the being children of God, right? Whom we are redeemed, by whom God, God was the one that gave us redemption, and whom we receive adoption from. We asked him to look on us as his sons and daughters. He loosens those sins and takes them. Now, the converse could be the fact that never mind, I digress. <laughs> I was thinking how that worked in my head and it was not at all coming out the way it should. But when we're given God's mercy, when we received his freedom, when we know we're sons and daughters of the Father. We can have this communion because we don't stand alone. We are not individuals on an island. We are in communion, and that's what we're meant for with our God. I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. We hear two or more before in the scriptures, where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. <clears throat> when you come here together, when we come to worship God together, we ask God, and He does deliver. And it's, it's on His time, and it's on His terms. But He does deliver. He delivers those things we ask. 
and a reminder of us being his sons and daughters, the granting of true freedom, the life of God in the very Eucharist. All of this is built into the joy of the Christian life and persons being in communion. And in order for us to remain in communion, an essential element is always going to be fraternal correction. Because let's face it, folks, if you never cared about correcting someone, I would assure you, you would not remain in relationship with them. Spouses, you know this better than anything. I'm sure correction occurs, and yet here you are, still together, still in love, and still willing to be holy. Because if you didn't care about them, you probably wouldn't be with them. And we know that that's not healthy. Our society today will tend to try to resolve disputes through rules and regs. It's the law, or this rule, follow lawyers and courts, fines and penalties. We often try from the beginning to get justice from someone through someone else. That's a faulty premise. When we know that nobody reacts well to being pressured into doing stuff. We should always try to start settling disputes with others, one-on-one, frankly, and with charitable dialogue. We not only seek our good, we seek the good of the person who's afflicted us. We won't completely understand motives. We can't judge the heart. We might have small disagreements that can be resolved. And if an attempt at correction fails, which we're human, it's always possible, it is not a lack of charity to bring witnesses in, and if necessary, further the truth, to help both parties see and adhere to the truth. Justice is always going to be sought. To render what's due is always sought, but the good of both parties, as well, should be in mind. If a guilty party does not listen to all the facts and an authoritative judgment, then the guilty party has been shown to be not in communion with those they have afflicted. And that has to be acknowledged, and sometimes that's a public reality. When the church formally declares someone to be excommunicated, which is out of communion, or under even a severe penalty, it's called interdict, it's a canonical penalty, it is taking a step always for the rehabilitation of that person, the unrepentant one, and for their good. Just to illustrate something for you, a false story, but a fun story, on a foggy night, a large ship, smaller, a small ship, was seen on the sea to change course just slightly. The request calmly declined for the large ship to switch the course. The large ship made radio contact and asked the other ship to change that course. Angry and astonished, the large ship identified itself with all its titles and demanded to be heeded. This is the USS Big Naval Ship. And there will be serious consequences if you don't change course immediately. Over. The response, this is a lighthouse. Over. <laughs> the small ship was a lighthouse, and the USS Big Naval Ship, for all its fuming, was headed straight for the rocky coast. My friends, fraternal correction is simply pointing out that someone is on a collision course. They can stay on course if they wish, but it's inadvisable. We've spoken about fraternal correction and the need to learn to accept it as well. If someone takes interest enough in you to point out something that you might need to work on, be grateful. Don't let that brother reality creep in. If the person is not exactly fraternally caring about it, and it is a valid point, still be grateful. As an added bonus, it will help you to be more, more fraternal in correcting others. May God in his good grace this day remind you that we're persons in communion, the good of fraternal correction, 
its necessity and its plan given to us by Christ who is, reconcil who is was reconciling the world to, his, to the Father and entrusting us to the message of reconciliation. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, the light from light, true God and true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us then and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified with Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess with evidence forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To God, the Father Almighty, dear brothers and sisters, may every prayer of our heart be directed, for His will it is that all humanity should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For Francis, our Pope, Samuel, our Archbishop, Jorge, our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the Church, may the Lord graciously persevere and protect them all as a sign of His truth to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. For all nations, may their leaders be governed by the power of the Holy Spirit in love of and service to one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. For all of us gathered here today, for our family and friends, through the grace of the sacrament, may we be drawn ever more deeply unity with one another and our triune God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. For those blinded by sin, may the compassion and mercy of God lead them to goodness and repentance. And for those who are sick in mind or body, may the Lord bring them healing, especially Joe Haywood, Nancy Good, Moises Cabrera, Robert Racer, Betty Flory, Ted and Mary Galehouse, Michael Kaufman, Bob Thompson, Matthew Spencer, Edward Duhon, and Travis Hall. We pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. Lord, 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 for all those who have died, may the Lord have mercy on them and gather them to his side for eternity. We pray for Dorothy Higdon and Deacon Jim Wall. We pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, and for the intention of today's Mass, the repose of the soul of Connie Martinson. We pray to the Lord. Lord, our Lord. Lord our 
we pray, uh, incline your merciful ear to our prayers, we ask, O oh Lord, and listen in kindness to the supplications of those who call on you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, 
by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that by the rising from the sun, of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take it, all of you, and drink it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Bernadette, with Saint Francis de Sales, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope and Samuel, our bishop, Jorge, our auxiliary bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy,
mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I remember you. Teach him our heart. For the same word, my soul The body. Body of Christ. The body. Body The body. Body of Christ. The body. Body of Body of Christ. The body. Body of Christ. The body. Body of Body of Christ. The body. Body of Christ. The body. Body of Christ. The body. The body. The body.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just to thank you in general for the offertory and all financial contributions, it certainly makes things uh, helpful and is much appreciative knowing that uh, the faithful, you all and abroad are very generous in providing for the needs of the church. By God's good grace, we might have lights, we'll see, but that's just out of our control for right now. <laughs> but I thank you for your patience, I thank you for your care, and that's that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank you. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us from God. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou our prince of the heavenly host. By the power of God, thrust in the hell of Satan and all the evil spirits, who brought about the world seeking to ruin the souls. Amen.